Welcome to Zoo Tours, the channel that takes you on a virtual field trip to the zoo. And if free zoo visit sounds pretty good to you, then please hit those like, sub, and bell buttons to officially join the rest of the tour group. It's been way too long, but Zoo Tours is back in our nation's capital. And to show you that I'm sorry for not getting back quick enough, here's Pandas Wrestling. Actually, the point of today's episode is to show you that the Smithsonian National Zoo is much more than just pandemonium. For the most part, this living museum has excellent exhibit design, what feels like a never-ending supply of small mammals. Elephants can take a break from us and take a walk in the woods. Orangutans can swing over our heads. And you know what a lot of zoos surprisingly lack? A decent exhibit dedicated to South America. The Amazonia Building, debuted in 1992. Even decades later, it's one of the reasons why I came back to DC. Amazonia invites you to explore just a smidgen of the world's largest river basin. It's packed full of really, really up-close encounters with freshwater giants. You're asked to get hands-on in a researcher's lab that'll literally shock you. Trek through an unsigned, hot, and humid rainforest so you'll never know what you'll find. And stick around to the end for a little bonus content of the Amazonia Science Gallery. The zoo's website considers their spectacled bears part of Amazonia and the American Trail, so... The indoor path was reversed and had us entering from the exit. We don't do that here. Entering through airlock doors that keeps in that humidity. Guests will find themselves root level with a 28,000 gallon freshwater reservoir. No matter how much you think it looks like one, it's not a touch tank. So these arowanas, yellow spotted side neck turtles, and a fever of freshwater rays are lovable but not touchable. Please admire from afar to avoid hiring a lawyer. The river runs darker, deeper, and into a swarm of giants. Red-tailed kittyfish, black pacus, and arapaima. Remember that air breathers versus water breathers SpongeBob episode? The one where we find out that Sandy is actually a girl? Well, anyways, this ancient fish can be part of both teams. Many freshwater fish don't just survive off of the oxygen in the water. Arapaima have a modified swim bladder, which controls their buoyancy and enables them to extract oxygen from the air. A second tank in this set usually holds piranhas. The third is the most plentiful Amazonian display. This flagtail kerosene was the only one willing to give the camera some love, literally. After the first section comes Dr. Brazil's field station, a well-crafted arrangement of a scientist's research outpost. Their most prized examinee is the electric eel. There are four metal strips in their tank that can detect when this knife fish emits a charge. Pulses are then converted into sound, voltage, and light as seen and heard from nearby speakers and on this screen that I somehow didn't see allowing visitors to see their voltage strength. You're encouraged to feel the current for yourself. This station features a 40 second animated video giving an inside look of the electric eel's anatomy. When you touch both ends of this model in front of it, it releases an electric shock. Some are able to handle it better than others. But the current doesn't end there. The next two displays does something a little similar with two other kinds of knife fishes. With the push of a button, you can hear the sounds that they emit. The current is still carried with elephant nose knife fishes, another scaleless species that emits a weak electrical charge that they use to either locate food and possibly in a way to see or find others of their own kind. The electricity is finally grounded with the Mata Mata, a turtle that can't hide in its own shell, but that raggedy skin and leaf-shaped head make it really easy to blend in with a leaf-littered stream. Dr. Brazil also collected a series of small, normal-looking fish, a violent line piranha, freshwater angelfish that they probably bought from the pet store, rummy-nosed tetras, royal, and banjo whiptail catfish cute little panda corridoras. Lastly, in the corner, in the carrion crate, is a Brazilian rainbow boa. From the understory to the rainforest canopy, there are three rules you need to follow. Keep your voice low, 
which people don't, stay on the pathway, which people don't, and do not encourage the animals to come to you, which people do. That's their way of telling you, you're not the only ones that are allowed to walk around this area. The Green Arasari, which is basically a fancy word for medium-sized toucan. There are 14 kinds. Only greens have serrated edges on their beaks, kind of like a steak knife. One of nature's greatest works of art, the hawk-headed parrot. They're colorful. They have an awesome name. And both of these features are defined by their headdress. When alarmed, or maybe even when they're in a playful mood, they'll raise their feathers on its nape to greatly increase the bird's apparent size. Somewhere out there in all this greenery, there's a sloth that, no, I didn't see. Bolivian gray TT monkeys were chilling in their own little private area. Red-footed tortoise and the can't miss, because they seem to be at every other zoo. Roseate spoonbills are typically stationed along the river that runs through this forest. The same river that we saw below. If it weren't filled with fish known to attack people when threatened, this pool would be a for sure tempting solution to the 85 degree temperature and the 80% humidity. The atrium comes to an end with a small overlook. If you lean over the railing, yes I see the stingray, Amazonia comes full circle and takes you back to the very first tank. So everything that roams around up here in the canopy has access to the entire forest floor. The heat and the humidity subside, but those smiles on your face might remain for guinea pigs, a rodent that was domesticated from South America. They make wonderful pets and make for one of the perfect finales to Amazonia. One of them. You can leave now, but Amazonia is connected to the Science Gallery. Its main feature is the Amphibian Alert exhibit. The first two that are individually displayed are beady-eyed African clawed frogs and the scares my girlfriend to death Kaecilian. They're worm-like and limbless, but still very much an amphibian. Center stage is a family game to see how many dart frogs you can find. Or you can head over to this corner where they're pretty much out in the open. Golden dart frogs, red spotted newts, also poisonous to the touch. Its toxins cause skin irritation and muscle paralysis to its predators. And wait for the shot to be done, there's green and black dart frogs. This Plinko-like contraption asks you to flick a marble, aka an oxygen molecule, to demonstrate that amphibians are most susceptible to absorbing oxygen through its skin. The signs above warn of a deadly fungus killing off frogs, and while zoo scientists are actually in Panama working to stop it, they're working some of their magic right here with what I assume is a breeding facility. The only ones that were actually truly visible though were Fowler's toads of the eastern US, a toad that's known for playing possum. The next room over is the coral lab. Zoo scientists have collected genetic material from 12 coral species. In the future, it could be used to repopulate reefs suffering from climate change. The tour comes to an end with the amphibian arc room, another breeding lab. There's room for up to 20 species, but last time there were only Panamanian golden frogs, which I believe to be the most endangered animal in the entire building. I wish we could continue on, but there's nothing more to see. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Amazonia, one of the greatest additions in Smithsonian history. Let me know your thoughts, and on your way out, be sure to tip your tour guide with a subscription, or stop by my Zoo Tours gift shop for wild merch now 20% off. All you have to do is use the promo code ZOO123. As this episode draws to a close, answer this trivia question. Remember to support your local zoo. And thank you all for watching. <laughs>